Well, hello, welcome to the live stream. It's here on Facebook, also on YouTube, hopefully, anyway, this week. It's me, Phil, in the Digital DJ Tips studio. Our controller of the week is still the Tractor Control S4, which we're having a lot of fun playing with. Uh, but we're not talking about controllers. We're not even talking about gear today. What we're talking about is choosing a DJ name. One of the biggest topics out there, uh, our, our content about this gets shared hundreds of thousands of times. So we know a lot of you want to know about how to do this, how to choose a great DJ name, how to get a name that people will remember. And so we're gonna cover it in some depth today. As always, I'm gonna want you to take part and we want, want you to share your DJ name down underneath here. Uh, tell us how you picked it. Tell us if you like it or not. Tell us other names that you've tried and not liked maybe. Whatever you wanna ask about DJ names, today is the time to do that down in the comments. Now, if you're new to this, we are Digital DJ Tips. We are the world's biggest DJ school. This is the book you might have seen that we have uh, got out there on Amazon and in all good bookstores. It's called Rock the Dance Floor and it shows you how to become a great DJ or DJ producer. But today, we're doing it live. We do it live every Tuesday. So again, if you're new to this, hit the subscribe button so that you can uh, get alerted to these. And if you're on YouTube watching this, hit the bell as well, which will also notify you when we go live with these. Please do comment. Uh, if you are an existing subscriber, it's great to have you back. And if you're watching on the replay, you should have seen it live. Hit the subscribe. The only other thing I'm going to ask you to do is if you find this useful today, then please do hit the share button because that will get it far and wide and help us carry on doing these things. So I'm just going to have a little check to make sure that we are actually live and that people can actually see and hear us. Uh, loving the live tips videos, says Kevin. Well, that's really good news. Glad that you're enjoying them, Kevin. Uh, Evan Polano says, uh, uh, I just use my name. Uh, DJ Tendix, made from six names, says Nandy. So there we go. Uh, John says, I'm DJ Glowfax. Glowfax Z. Well, we'll have something to say about names that even I struggle with uh, in a minute. Um, so uh, anyway, loads of your names coming in. So I will read a lot of those out. Please keep your DJ names coming in underneath in the comments. So we are talking about DJ names today here on Tuesday Tips Live on Facebook and YouTube with Digital DJ Tips. And I'm going to give you all the tips and tricks that we have assembled over the years that mean that you can choose a really good name. So number one is how are you going to find your name? What are you going to settle on? How are you going to start this like quest for a DJ name? Well, here's a few things that people tend to do. The number one thing is just use your own name, right? That's what I did, Phil Morse. That was my DJ name. And uh, if your name's okay, uh, and it's reasonably uncommon, uh, there's not many Morses, and there's all the jokes about Morse code and you know, um, Inspector Morse, for those of you in the UK who know that detective series. You know, it was an all right name. I just stuck with it. So you, you might stick with it as well. Pete Tong has stuck with his name. Lots of other DJs. Uh, we're going to talk about how long or short your name should be in a bit, but generally the shorter, the better. So if you've got a reasonably short name that you can stick with, hey, no problem. Just stick with it. It's okay. Uh, if you haven't, though, if you've got a longer name, uh, you know, if your name is Phil Shufflebottom or something like that, uh, then, you know, maybe you are going to have to rethink that. So another thing to do then, if your usual name, your own name, is not enough, or a variation on your own name, like, for instance, if you've got two or three names, pick the ones you like, uh, it's just to change your name a little bit further. So vary either your first name or it's quite often your surname that changes your second name uh, to something which is a bit cooler. So if Pete Tong was called Pete Shufflebottom, maybe then he changed his name to Pete Tong and there we go, keeping them shorter. That's gonna be a theme of what we talk about here. Uh, and so that's the best place to start for a lot of people is either their real name or a variation of their real name. Now, if you can't use your real name, then maybe your friends, family, schoolmates have already helped you out by giving you a nickname. Now, nicknames are good because they tend to come from some character trait or something about you, which is normally might, maybe a bit, a bit amusing or a bit clever, but whatever it is, a nickname might be a really good name to start with. Um, so go for, uh, go for all those things, real name, variation on real name, nickname, right at the very beginning before you start going any further. You might just find that, hey, your DJ name is sat there waiting for you. There's no need to look any further. By the way, if you have just joined us, we're talking about DJ names. We're talking about how to pick a good DJ name. A good name is important. It's gonna be with you throughout your hobby, throughout your career. So picking wisely is something that is worth spending a little bit of time to do. And we've already covered, look, just use your real name, use a variation on your real name, or uh, if you haven't got 
a real name that's any good, then why not start with your nickname and do the same thing? Use your nickname or a variation on it. Start to think laterally. So if they are no good, uh, if you need to kind of go a bit further, we're going to need to look a bit far and wide. So what bands used to do was literally get a pin and a dictionary and start, you know, putting a pin in a random page on a dictionary and seeing if that at least got them thinking about something. Nowadays, we can do that digitally. There are loads of name generators online, so you can find baby name generators. If you haven't had kids yet, uh, you know, you probably don't know these things exist, but as soon as, I promise you, as soon as you are having kids, you'll find them. There are these generators, and there are hundreds of them online, which will show you, you can put in your country and, the, you know, the decade you want to search for a name from and the sex, male or female, and it will look for uh, names which are popular, not so popular, uh, and there's other variations that you can find. You know, you can spend a long time looking through there and trying to pick names that will work for you. So name generators are a great thing. You don't have to use baby name generators. There are actually uh, specialized DJ name generators out there and band name generators. Probably better to go for a band name generator uh, because it might throw up more musical stuff uh, than a baby one. And the DJ ones tend to be quite limited and not very good. We've always said we ought to build one here at Digital DJ Tips. There used to be a good one on the One Extra website, BBC Radio One Extra uh, website, where you can put in your type of music like hip hop, grime, R&B, uh, and then whether you're a bloke or a girl, and it would chuck out a few names uh, to you. So these things come and go. Have a look for online name generators, which uh, might help you. So welcome if you've just joined us. We're talking about picking a DJ name. I've asked you to share your DJ names down in the comments. So I'm going to have a look down here and read a few of them out. Uh, um, uh, Mick says his name is absolutely Mick. I quite like that, Mick. Um, so um, uh, use your elf name. Look on Facebook. It's like every other status in November, says Chris. Well, there we go then. Um, uh, Dino says Elrak. That's my middle name backwards. K-R-A-L. Carl backwards is Elrak. Uh, so uh, DJ Woolly uh, is John. Moda, quite like that one, is Craig. Um, so uh, Techno Tom says High Fidelity. So we, have, uh, we don't even have a real name anywhere in, in your uh, details here. Um, hello to everyone who's just saying hello to John and Anthony and so on. Uh, DJ Nigel Darren says, Nigel Darren, first and middle name. Well, that's easy enough. Um, so um, I just use my name with and, with, uh, and without the DJ bit in front, says Ben Vincent. Uh, ben from Digital DJ Tips. Hi, Ben. Uh, so we'll talk about whether or not to use the letters DJ in front of your name in a minute because there are some different schools of thought on the best way of doing that. Uh, Rudy says, I just use my real name and I will use it unless I go with the side project. Again, we're going to talk about having more than one DJ name in a minute. Sometimes it's a good idea. Um, my first name makes my DJ name obvious, says Bo White. Yes, it does. Bo White, Snow White. I think that's what you're getting at. We get that one. Uh, DJ Demon says Damien. Uh, and um, DJ Adopted, says Chris. DJ Magical, Ma Magical Maximus, says Anthony. So there we go. Uh, hello, Magical Maximus. DJ Adobo, uh, says Marco. Loads of great names coming in here. DJ Valentino AM, says DJ Valentino AM. Uh, and um, okay, cool. So thank you very much for showing your names. I'll read a few more out a bit later. If you're wondering why I'm just giving shout outs to people's names. Uh, it's because we're talking about DJ names today. So if you are enjoying us talking about DJ names, hit that share button. And if you've just stumbled over this, hit subscribe, and then you will be notified when these go live in the future. And you can follow along as we do it live. Okay, so however you choose your name, your own name, a variation, a nickname, using name generators, uh, using a foreign language, that's a really good one. That's how Sasha got his name, because he's called Alexander, and Alexander in Russian is Sasha. He looked up his name in another language. Uh, however you choose your name, at some point, you're gonna have to make up your mind whether what you've chosen is right. So let's talk for a few minutes about uh, whether you've got a good name and ways of kind of stress testing your name. So the first way of doing it, the first way of stress testing it, which is not always right. Some of the biggest name DJs don't pass this test, but generally it's one of those things that would be really cool if you could get it right. It's what we call the radio test. So the radio test is if you um, heard your DJ name on the radio or on the phone or, you know, close your eyes and someone says it to you, A, will you hear it correctly? In other words, is it clear when you say it? And B, can you write, can you then write it down correctly? Because if your name is easy to understand and comprehend and then easy for someone else to write down, it's more likely to kind of go name viral, right? It will be written down properly. People will hear it. They'll remember it. 
I don't know about you, but if I'm introduced to someone and their name is familiar to me, like John or Darren or Sarah or whatever, I kind of remember it better than if it's a name I haven't heard before or I'm not massively familiar with. So familiar words are a good thing to have, simple familiar words in your name. They pass the radio test. If people heard them on the radio, they, they, they wouldn't think, what was that? Did I, did I hear that right? They'd think, oh, you know, it's Pete Tong. Uh, but they'd also be able to write it down, P-E-T-E-T-O-N-G, right? Pete Tong's got a great DJ name. It's just unusual enough, but at the same time, it's simple enough. So does the name you've chosen pass the radio test? If it's got apostrophes and other punctuation in it and you're trying to be clever, possibly it doesn't. You know, Dead Mouse fa fa fails that one by having M-A-U and the number five at the end of his name. So there are exceptions, but generally, Look for the radio test. That's the first thing I always look for. So the second thing I look for is the URL. If you haven't got the URL for your name, i.e., you know, philmorse.com, which by the way, I haven't got. There's a, a dude in the States somewhere who is a very good woodworker who has philmorse.com. I've had to settle for .co.uk. But no, seriously, it is a serious point. If you haven't got the .com for the name you've chosen, then it's definitely a negative. It's really worth trying to get a name with the .com. Now, depending on where you live in the world, you might, like .co.uk is pretty common in the UK. So I wasn't that bothered about not having the .com for my name when I got it all those years ago, but I, I'd, I'd like to have it. Uh, but, you know, in a lot of countries, generally, whatever your local uh, name, country naming convention is, in Gibraltar, it's .gi doesn't really travel well, right? No one's going to think, if you say go and look for Phil Morse online, you wouldn't type in philmorse.gi, would you? You'd, you'd, go, you'd imagine that I had the .com or because I'm British, maybe the .co.uk. So trying to get the URL and preferably the URL that ends with .com is a really good idea. And the best way to check for that is just to go onto GoDaddy, type in your name, hit enter, and it will show you all the variations or a lot of them that are available. Uh, and if you can't get your name for whatever reason, uh, you could just try putting DJ in front of it. And we'll talk about putting DJ in front of your name in a minute, but you could just try putting DJ in front of it uh, and then, you know, going for that as a URL. Um, and I've seen people put their country in front of it as well. So maybe I would put philmorseuk.com to differentiate me from any other Phil Morses in the world. But really that .com URL is a very good thing to have. So there's another check to check for the .com. Now, um, Another thing you're going to want to do is not think about your name just in the sense of how it's written and how it's heard. You also want to think about your potential DJ name in the sense of how it looks because we're going to want to design that name into a nice logo as well. Nowadays, you do not exist as a DJ unless you are a logo. If you look at any decent flyer, any publicity for any decent night, you will notice one thing. All the top names have got logos. And as you get towards the bottom of the, you know, if it's a festival with 60 DJs, the bottom 20 might be written out in normal typeface, but the rest of it is all logos. You want to be one of the logos, right? You don't want to be one of the typefaces. So what are you going to do to make sure your logo gets um, accepted by your audience? Well, you're going to get a nice logo designed. So how do we do that? Well, there's two ways that I have uh, always recommended and I'll pass them on to you now. If you go to fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R.com, you can pay a small amount of money and you can audition your name. I want, a, I want a DJ logo making, here's my name, and you can audition it to loads of people who will bid for the job. Uh, and then when they make some logos for you, you choose the one you like. Uh, as long as you're happy, as soon as you're happy, the money gets released to them. It's a really nice way of getting not only design work, lots of things done, but in this instance, design work done. Another way of doing it, if you want to go uh, to town on it, it's a very similar site, 99designs, 99designs is a great website. Uh, you'll probably get higher quality work there, but it'll cost you quite a bit more. So there's two ideas there, getting designer friends to help you with your logo. I would say if you're not a designer, definitely don't do it yourself. You might think it looks quite good and get excited in the moment, but it will not look as good as a logo designed by a real designer. When your logo is delivered, make sure you get a scalable version of it. So uh, typically that'd be a PDF. It could be a Photoshop or an Illustrator file, more likely. But get a version of it that you can scale up to really big. Maybe one day someone wants to put it on a huge poster, right? So you don't want to, people to supply you with a small version that when you scale it up, it looks rubbish. So just make sure you get all the formats uh, that are available to you, including a high-res one. PDFs are quite good. Uh, so get your, lo get your um, logo made. Uh, and now we're kind of done. But there's one big thing I didn't discuss about DJ names, and that is DJ. So, uh, by the way, if you have just joined us and you think, why is the DJ website saying 
DJ all the time. It's clear they're a DJ website. The reason we're talking about all this stuff is we're talking about DJ names. We're talking about picking a name. So if you have just joined us, head to the beginning and watch again on the replay afterwards and you'll catch up with where we are now. Uh, and um, subscribe so that you don't miss this in the future. Right, so do we use the letters DJ before our name or not? So let's have a poll. I want you to hit the, um, hit the thumbs up if you are someone who thinks it's good to use DJ before your name, like DJ Snake, for instance. Uh, give, me some, uh, give me some ideas on that and I will um, kind of like convey the general feeling to everyone. Not a massive number of people um, believe that that's a good idea and that actually reflects the way it is out there. You'll find that most DJs now don't have DJ in front of their name. So it's a curious thing. Back 20 years ago, uh, people did. People just stuck DJ in front of their real name and they were done. Then it kind of like got a bit naff to do that. And especially when people started producing music, then it was kind of like, well, if I produce music and I've got DJ in front of my name, everyone will think I'm a DJ and not a music producer. And I want, I want to be taken seriously as an artist, man. So I'm not going to have DJ in front of my name. I remember very clearly the Chemical Brothers were saying, look, we're just DJs. Why can't we just call ourselves you know, DJ and then our names? And Pete Tong said to them, look, pick a, pick a name, call yourself something um, and don't put DJ in front of it. Uh, you will do a lot better that way as artists. And hey, they're still here, however many albums further on. It was good advice uh, from Pete Tong to the Chemical Brothers back in the day. But things have changed a little bit. And the reason they've changed is that every DJ is a producer now anyway. So if you've got DJ in front of your name or not, everyone knows you make music. And if you don't, you want to, right? So it's not really as important as it used to be. But that said, I think, you know, roughly one in 10 DJs is my guess. Uh, when you get to the kind of DJs that we're talking about, touring DJs, residents, DJ artists, DJ producers, and so on, only about one in 10 have DJ before their name. So it isn't very trendy to do that. So it kind of reflects what you were saying down here, guys and girls. So <clears throat> those are questions coming in. I'm gonna answer a few of them in a second. Uh, I do want to shout out a few more of your DJ names because, uh, uh, because there's loads and loads of them coming in. In fact, there's so many coming in that I'm gonna to have to just kind of pick at random from here. Um, so um, uh, DJ main event says Frank, I like that one. Um, 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 after a drunk night out with my friends, I was given the nickname DJ Filthy Philip, and it's stuck. F Filthy Philp says Liam, and it's stuck. So Philp must be your surname there. So maybe won't pass the radio test that one. Um, so uh, Mash Doctor, I like Mash Doctor. DJ Walter, architect with a K, won't pass the radio test, but you might get away with that because at least it passes the pronunciation test. Um, so um, DJ 007 says, Chris, I was talking to John 00 Fleming today, who is a DJ from the UK. 00 Fleming, Ian Fleming, James Bond, that kind of stuck years ago. Um, so um, uh, EDI says Edward Suarez. Um, mine is DJ Dark Edge, says Mark. Uh, and I've been using Diamond Fox for over five years, says Andrea or Andrea. Um, DJ Emil says Emil. Um, DJ Stevie N says Steve Notlob, uh, and Laurie says I'm considering using my nom de web Sunfell, Sunfell as my DJ name. I like that Sunfell. They might spell it S O N F E L L instead of S U N, but that's cool. I like that one. DJ Christo says Chris Roy. DJ Manifestation says Gary. Um, so lots and lots of good DJ names coming. Huckleberry Spins uh, says Darren. I quite like that one. No surprise to hear that that one came from a name generator. Um, okay, awesome. So, right, questions. Should I have one DJ name or two? This comes up a lot. So really the thing here is if you've got two completely different audiences in your DJing life that are totally separate, then two DJ names might make sense. So you've got people like Eric Prids, who's Ceres D for his more underground stuff. Uh, another version of that is Roger Sanchez, who is S-Man for his underground stuff. But also you might be, you know, a DJ producer type kind of dude who also has a mobile DJ business, a wedding DJ business. So if you're called DJ Spider, uh, that is a real DJ of course, but if you're called DJ Spider in your DJ production side of your life, maybe DJ Spider Wedding Services isn't a very good kind of name in, uh, in that side of your life. So maybe you would be called, you know, um, Phoenix Wedding uh, Entertainment Services or whatever, you know. So you've got two names that way. So that's very common because the, the overlap between a mobile DJ, wedding DJ, event DJ, and like say an underground house producer DJ type, even if it's the same person, there's no overlap. So it's okay to do that. And as I said, also if you do two very different types of music, 
or you've got two sides to your own personality, like Roger Sanchez and S-Man, then again, it's worth doing. But be careful with that because it can get very complicated. And then you're like, well, you need two Facebook pages, two Instagram accounts. You know, it, it can get very complicated very quickly. In, in 9.5 cases out of 10, not worth doing. But do bear in mind, the biggest distinction is the one from a mobile DJ business and a, um, a club DJing side to your life as well. So another question is, what do I do if my name is taken? So a few things here. Be realistic. If your ambitions as a DJ are just your small town and you never want to do any more, you play twice a year, then who cares if you've got the same DJ name as someone else somewhere else in the world? Because there's not going to be any issue, any overlap, probably. So, hey, you know, not the end of the world. Um, if you, um, the other person with your name is a very big DJ, then you might get mistaken for that person, not good. If you've got aspirations to be a very, very big DJ and someone else is all, or already has your name, however big they are, again, not very good. You know, if the two of you are never gonna meet, hey, who cares? What you see sometimes is that they put the name of the country in the name of the DJ. So in other words, uh, there was a band years ago called The Chameleons. It turned out there was another band called The Chameleons in the States. This was a UK band. So they called themselves The Chameleons UK only when they were in the States. So you could think about doing stuff like that, but really, if someone else has got your name and they are in any way big or getting big or have got a decent presence online, of course, you don't have to be big to have a decent presence online nowadays, then think very hard about whether you want to use that name as well. Unless it's a common name and you're not very ambitious in your DJing and you're just playing locally and stuff, probably best to pick another name. Um, so let's go back to some of the things that we are uh, getting in here live and there's an awful lot of you sharing your DJ names live. Um, get to the other end of the list because uh, I've already been at that end. DJ Coffee says Philip. DJ Reno says Reno. Uh, I go by DJ Pest One says Robert and I do do weddings, birthday parties and private parties so there we go. Um, I have some problem with my DJ name. I've been using this name for more than nine years. Um, someone else uses it and, uh, and pays for my name. I know I've got to change. I don't know which name to use says Alex um, whose name is Alex Ferrer. So yeah it's a uh, it's um, always annoying when that happens, Alex. If you've got the .com, that's almost as good as the trademark. People do ask, should I trademark my name? Mm, honestly, I don't know many people who do it. Only the .com kind of owns the name for you. Uh, my DJ name is Bobby, and I got country code for Dibuti. Bobby D. Oh, okay. So D. Yeah. So Bobby's saying he's got Bobby .dj as his uh, URL. It's a really good URL. That. So you could go for .dj um, if you. Uh, you know, if you can't get the .com, we were talking about that earlier. Um, so TJ Johnson says, yeah, I, I, I know what you mean. I've got Rhino Weddings for my wedding DJing. Uh, so loads and loads of you giving your uh, DJ names here. Please do carry on adding those below. You know, DJ Snake, Kygo, Pete Tong, Axwell, um, Diplo, Sasha, all these names that we're talking about or that are big. One thing they've got in common, they're short. They pass the radio test. They're easy to spell. They don't mean anything. What does DJ Snake mean? To me, it doesn't mean anything. Maybe I'm wrong. What does Diplo mean? What does Axwell mean? What does Hardwell mean? What they have is something that's easy to remember, something that's short, but that's distinctive enough to stand out when you hear it. And that is the magic you're going for. So this is the kind of name that when you know it's sticking, it's likely to be short and it's likely to be distinctive. But look, to close this down, a lot of you say, you know, I can't decide what name to use. Um, it's, you know, it's, um, it's doing, you know, I've been trying for months to pick a DJ name. I keep trying this and trick. You can overthink these things. You really can overthink DJ names. Why? Because one truth about this stuff is whatever name you pick is going to sound stupid to you and it's going to feel weird. But what happens with names is you grow into them. They become what you do. Names pick up a life of their own over time. You forget, when you hear that name, you forget the words and the shape of it and the look of it and you just hear what it means and your audience will be the same. You know, when I hear digital DJ tips, I don't hear anything now, I just hear, you know, our company, the eight people who work here day in, day out to make all the DJ courses and the training and do all, the, all this stuff and so on. Um, and, you know, that's the key. What you do in your DJing, what you do is much better more important than the name you've chosen to represent you doing it. And I promise you, as long as your name's all right, um, and as long as it passes some of those tests, hopefully you can get the URL, hopefully it's not too long, hopefully most people can spell it when they hear it. Hey, you, you're pretty much there or thereabouts. And everything else, 
It's down to your gear, your music, your techniques, how you play, how you promote yourself. That's where the real magic will come. That's where your name will take on a life of its own. Now that said, let's just talk for one second about branding because branding is a big art. We're not gonna talk about branding here, but what we've actually been talking about is all about branding. Branding is how a company, a person, a thing makes you feel and how the things that have been attached to that by the marketers you know, make you feel. So for instance, if your name is um, and I'm just going to make this up on the spot. If your name is a DJ hippie fairy and you've got like scribbly white writing and a psychedelic logo, what does that suggest? It suggests a DJ who plays long sets, which are maybe quite progressive and it's very druggy and it's very maybe a bit retro. And you know what you're going to get from DJ hippie fairy and it's not going to be what you get from Skrillex, is it? Skrillex even suggests what his music sounds like, right? So. The final thing I'm gonna leave you with is when you pick your name, think how it makes you feel and therefore how it will make your audience feel. Is it gentle? Is it aggressive? Is it short and punchy? Is it relaxing? Does it suggest sophistication? Does it suggest edgy? Does it suggest fun? Or, you know, it's a good idea to, to say your name out loud and then write down what it suggests and see if that is you. And if it's not, maybe the branding side of it isn't quite there. Of course, the design of the logo and so on is also gonna help with all that stuff. Right, we've talked about DJ names today. We have a lot of stuff over on Digital DJ Tips about this. If you just search DJ names or choosing a DJ name online, the first page will have loads of articles in it and we're one of them. So go click on there and see. It's a little bit old now. We need to update that article, but it's also a very good article. It covers in writing a lot of the stuff I've talked about here today. Please do continue to let us know your DJ names down here in the comments so we can uh, give you thumbs up and, and maybe some suggestions about them. Uh, and um, keep choosing, keep thinking if you haven't chosen your name yet. Don't take too long to do it, will you? So it just remains for me to say, get good, get out there, make the moments. If you've joined us on YouTube for the first time today, good to have you here. We'll be here every week at this time. So we will see you then. Uh, and to everyone else who's been here for all these months on Facebook, it's been good to have you along too. I'll see you again very soon. Till next week. Bye-bye.